All right, guys, how you doing? Josh here with Ohio Fish Rescue. Today, we're bringing you yet another tour video, but this one's special. We got a nice, you know, handy dandy mic, so let us know how you like the audio on this video. But it's also raining here in Ohio, so you guys get to see this beautiful 35,000 gallon koi pond while it is sprinkling outside. You guys can see, if you look over to the left, you can see the uh, gutter hooked up to the roof drain that's actually feeding the pond. So as water comes off of this br brand new EPDM, uh, it's actually a pond liner, so it's fish safe. All the water comes in, washes through the pond, out the overflow, and you're actually putting, that, putting in fresh water. So after a nice rain is when a lot of times your koi will actually spawn. We've had these guys spawn in here two times this year already. There's hundreds of babies. You guys can see all these plants are waking up everywhere. We're still working on the outside landscape of this pond. But a quick little rundown, the thing is 40 foot wide, 30 foot that way, and then at the deepest point, it is five foot deep. This is just over 35,000 gallons. We've got a eight by five by five wetland filter right there coming into a stream, all filled with plants, which we're still working on getting more plants in here. I mean, I guess it could technically be some type of bog filter, but the idea is all the water passes through all these plants. It eats out all the nitrates, all the bad stuff, in the water and it looks aesthetically pleasing once they're all you know 100 percent and the plants are good to go so it then goes through a series of different waterfalls which is dual purpose it adds the the sight and the sounds of waterfalls and you're also getting aeration in the actual pond itself so we still have uh power heads to hook up we still have lights we still have a little bit of uh, edging to do here. You're not gonna see them big, uh, ugly uh, liners sticking out. We've still got lots of plants to, to do. You see them, uh, elephant ears, you know, right next to there, you've got rocks. We're still gonna do a little bit more edging with the rocks. This whole back area is going to uh, be all done up with a nice lattice. Then you guys can see the, these flat rocks there. We're actually going to place them strategically to try and make this a meandering river all the way across. So there's still lots of work to do. Uh, I think next week we have the guys coming in to start with the, the flagstone stamped concrete patio on the right side. So we're essentially going to have this back side and the right side complete with all landscaping. And Greg and Ed are go going to come back with Aquascape and they're, they're going to redo and soften up some of the edges and they're actually talking about doing an infinity edge over the back. So we might be taking out both of the skimmers on the back side, which could be really, really neat. So that's why we're not worried about doing the landscaping on that left side or the back side because that might come all the way back out. So now you guys seen the back koi pond? Let's go check out some other stuff inside. All right, so coming in here, first up, you guys know we have the Dwight Howard Aquarium off the show tanked. This was donated to us by Greg Whitstock. It was originally rat raffled off and uh, Clarissa actually won it. She was in Chicago, had it at Greg's place for about three months and then she chose to donate it back to us. So we're still working on an ultimate plan on what we're going to do with it, this tank. So right now it sits because we've got so many projects going on. And if you look right over here to your left, We've got one of our mascots. You're just reaching in and grabbing them off. Yep. This is Morla. Morla. This is an alligator snapping turtle. Um, yes, the, the, these guys do need, need a permit, which we, we do work with a lot of state agencies around, around us. So we have a blanket permit for a lot of the na native species here. And soon to come, we are actually going to have... Uh, Hopefully, cross our fingers, our CITES permit and an invasive species permit. So what that would allow us to do, anybody who brings us any sort of fish, no matter what it is, we've had to work with the State Department and they've get, given us a, a three-day grace period to take the fish in and take it to the spot that we're actually going to take it. But what this allows us to do is maybe keep it here for three to six months until we find that perfect home for, for these fish, no matter if it's snakeheads, wells cats, um, could, could be your a Asian arrows, but there, there's a long list of fish that you're not supposed to have right now, and we could possibly have those permits to keep those fish here for the time being. So we come up to this tank here, this is a thousand gallon. 
We're now using it for our bass and a pleco in there, which I cannot catch, but he is a Pseudocanthicus serratus or a black dragon cactus pleco. We've got a uh, Azul peacock bass. It's just an Azul. <laughs> Look how pretty that thing is. Now we, we've got uh, the mono peacock bass. And then hiding in here somewhere else is the gold Kelberry, which he's actually underneath the rock. So you guys aren't going to be able to get to see him today. But you guys can see how fat the, these bass are. They, they are definitely eating good. Now if you continue on down the line, this is the Frontosa tank. This is a 700 gallon aquarium. And as you can see, it's nothing but Frontosa. It was supposed to be all Zaire's, but there were a couple Burundi's that made it in there somehow. Super neat, neat fish. The, these guys do come out of Lake Tanganyika. So they're very, very deep in Lake Tanganyika. Um, don't quote me on it, but around 200, 250 feet. Now, we come over here, you guys see this is an empty 500 gallon tank. I'm still working on getting this, you know, set that up and fixed along with this 750 gallon tank. We actually used this as a, a quarantine before. It do, does hold water now, but we want to get this plumbed into our system and fed so it's actually on the same water as the monster pond right next to you. So you, you guys can see, we actually had to buff the front run of it, this tank. It was a li little bit, bit scratched, but we didn't go and put the polishing on, on it yet because we're gonna be you know, in, in there, we might need to buff it again. You, you might get water all over the front. So we, we didn't see that as a, uh, a have to situation now. But right when the tank gets set up, we're gonna go ahead and put the polishing finish on it and it'll look like a beautiful tank. So now if you pan over to your left, we have what we call the monster pond. This is a 58,000 gallon pond. At the beginning of its life, this was a uh, 12 foot deep pool on the deep end there. And over on the shallow end, it was uh, just over three foot deep. It was around 58,000 gallons. So we have things in here like the magnificent Arapaima, which Brutus is coming up right here. He's actually turning three this upcoming September and uh, he, he's about five and a half foot long. And this thing it is a tank. He's also joined by two very, very nice looking high quality platinum gars. They're just at, at about 34 inches or so. We've got arowana in here. We've got big old red tail catfish. We've got albino channel cats. Uh, right down there, we've got a Sparata Aor, which is an Indian shut double nose. Right below you, we've got the Disticatus, Sexafasiatus. Um, we've got iridescent sharks. We've got perun sharks. What else do we have in here? We've got the chocolate pleco. You don't see him out all too often. Over to your right, we've got the uh, hybrid shut shovel nose. Um, we met, mentioned the albino channel cats. We've got two of the, those in here. We've got massive, massive Niger cats. There's about five of them in here as well. Somewhere hiding, we have a giant Mexican musk turtle. We've got the albino giant garami on the far end over there. We've got a big old Nile tilapia. And then if you guys notice, there, there's a plethora of smaller cichlids all around the, this pool. We actually, uh, there's Africans, so there's Mbunas, peacocks, there's red jewel cichlids, and then there's a whole colony of African cichlids here. None of the uh, African cichlids we actually put in there. Those all washed over from the overflow, and uh, they actually colonized the, the pond that themselves. So what, what you see here is pretty much all net natural. The only fish we did add in were the uh, convict cichlids, hoping that they would establish a colony. And just the African cichlids have came in here and absolutely taken over. But you know what, it adds some color. They're very, very pretty. So uh, I'm not mad about it. But you know, know if I could, I would love to take all these Africans out and put them in our African cichlid tank, which you guys will see here very, very shortly. Now, if you turn around behind you, this is one of the other, one, one of the four tanks we have off of the show tanked. 
This was originally owned by the Bellagio tank. It was the Snow Globe Aquarium. However, we did not get any of the facade for the aquarium. So my dad actually made a makeshift standing canopy for it. And uh, it is now home to a bunch of guppies. So it's a cool, neat little, little attraction. Makes the guppies look huge. So a neat little tank to have tucked away in the corner. Coming over here, we have nothing but uh, fancy goldfish, orandas. Uh, th these are actually a, a rare type. They're called a blue fushigi. It's a, a, a blue fancy tail goldfish. We've got the, the, the giant uh, red cap orandas. Uh, Ryukans down there. And then we actually have Chinese high fin banded sharks. Check these guys out. He's actually pretty big. I'd say he's around eight to nine, nine inch or so. I think there's seven of those ones in here. But th this is our fancy goldfish tank. This is a 350 gallon. And then right next to it, this is a 580 gallon tank. It's 10 by three by 30. We actually just got this in place and we're going to uh, set this up. We don't know what for yet, but like I preached to everyone else, you always set the tank up first and then worry about what you're going to put in it. So if you follow, oh, watch your step. <laughs> if you follow me over here, you can see we have the waterfalls for the monster pond coming through a stream of nothing but pothos plants, spider plants, peace lit lilies. Now what this is doing is adding a little bit of natural filtration to this pond as well. And then you can see all these tanks are filled with koi. These are the, uh, the baby shack koi. Uh, when we, we had Shaq's koi here, they actually spawn, and these guys are growing out. Eventually, they're going to go into the, uh, the, the back pond. So that's what we ha have there. Now let's go and head into the fish room. All right, guys. Now beyond it, this door is something re really amazing, something me and my dad have built for, what, going on 10 y years now? Started out as just a hobby, me and my dad. My dad always had tanks growing up. He had large aquariums. This is something me and him got, got into and hobby tur turned into something great for the actual community. So now, you know, hobby has turned Ohio Fish Rescue an actual nonprofit organization to where we help fish all across the, the, the world. So cook them on in. The first tank you see here, this is actually our first tank build. Me and my dad built this from scratch. This is a 3,000 gallon, it's 16 foot long, uh, six and a half foot wide, and 44 inches tall, I do believe. I could be wrong on that, but that's a guesstimate on the size right there. This is a 3,000 gallon aquarium. This is an 11 foot viewing panel on the front side. And now th this is technically our Paku tank. Now if you guys know Paku, they love to bite everything, so you can't have cords in there, you can't have air lines, you can't have uh, smaller fish in there. So our big girl, Betty, right here, we, we uh, rescued her, uh, I believe, a little bit about a year ago. And uh, you can see how big this girl is. She's uh, ju just about three foot long. If I had to, to guess, she's about 60 sets of 70 pounds. She is a big girl. We rescued her from an 125 gallon tank, which is absolutely insane. But she's also joined in here by, uh, we've got Paco. We rescued him from Long Island, New York. We've got Charlie from the Dort Mall. And we've got another regular Paco. And we've got two true black Tambiki Paco that can get up to 400 pounds, which is absolutely insane. We've got uh, albino giant gourami. We've got another regular giant gourami hiding in here somewhere. Of course, we've got red tail cats. We've got tiger shovel nose down to the far left and then for your guys' viewing pleasure you can see this awesome awesome 30 inch Tamensis peacock bass this guy is absolutely awesome he came from uh, my buddy russ acredino and uh he is now living in a 3,000 gallon aquarium all righty so moving on from the 3,000, you come over here this is a 550 gallon this is our stingray tank. These are all fe female black diamonds and there's three white diamonds in, in here which are exceptional quality. You can come over here and look at this guy here, or girl, I'm sorry. 
Then there's one it in the back. Those are two of the white diamonds. Very, very beautiful rays. And in the back left corner, you can see there is a Tigrinus cat in there. There is also a uh, Capipredum, a uh, false Periba, but he's getting close to about 20 inches. He's a very, very thick boy. All right, now we do have one oddball. This is a uh, BD hybrid of some sort. I don't know what she's crossed with, but it did come from uh, Kevin and Stingray Biology. All right, now moving on here. This is a 650 gallon aquarium. Of course, we have one of our favorites here. We've got Hubert. Does this every time. Trying to get to get away from you. This is a fly rip river turtle. We rescued him from New Jersey. His name, name is Hubert and he came to us with a very, very bad uh, sh shell wound which we've healed back up and he's almost perfect. You can see we're also joined by a Donis Pleco. And then right below you, we've got a goonch catfish and a jow cat. All right, now if you come over here, you have the 4,400 gallon aquarium. This is 14 by 7 by 6. And, uh, You've got a little bit of everything in here. You've got big arowanas up top. You've got the Atlantic tarp in here. You've got Heisenberg, the giant garami. Uh, who else do we have in here? Coming up to the front is uh, Schwarzenegger. He is a xanthic iridescent shark, and he's about three foot long. We've got short bot buddy Perun sharks in here. We've got giraffe cats, we've got black ear prune sharks, we've got lemon barbs, we've got the red tailed giant garami here, what else, you've got the phoenix barbs to the left, we do have one oddball niger cat on show down here. There's a whole different array of marble cats. There's Illyrius pictus. And you guys can see the Jardini in here. He's about two foot. And he, he's actually not mean. Most of the time you have a Jardini arowana and he's got an attitude to him, but he tends to play nice. And up top here we've got Anubis. He's a overgrown Oscar and uh, it's thought to, to, to be that he might be a world record when we put him in here we measured him at 16 and a quarter which obviously he's been in here over a year so he's probably a bit longer than that now and he's joined by his friend uh, Red Oscar right there he's just a tad bit smaller but still a big old Oscar and of course you got black belt cichlids and clown knives. I think that finishes off what's in the 4400. Oh, and you've got the stingray down below. All right, so I mentioned everything about this tank. I think I've gotten everyone. Oh, you've got the uh, Midas cichlid back there. There, there's some odd, oddballs. I'm not going to go through a, a, every fish. This isn't a complete tour. It's just, you know, we're going through each and every tank and we're hitting all, all the highlights. We can make this an hour long vi video, but over here, this is the 1,000 gallon. This uh, has a li little bit more of our uh, ba baby monsters growing out. You have biters in there. You've got ornates. You've got uh, endless, not endless cherries, delhezy. And then you've got the Weeksy over on the right side. Keep talking. 
cameraman can go ahead and point to whatever fish he wants. I'm just going to keep rambling on. Of course, you've got the fire eels in here in the center of the tank. Um, they, they love to hide in and out of the driftwood, but they're probably about 27, 28, 8 inch or so. There's the phantom red tails. You guys can see we put them in there about last week. And there is a big platinum red tail in the back, but he always stays hit, hidden. There is Tigrinus catfish. There is uh, the green tear. You can see it, the orange on the outside of his fins. Looks very attractive. We've got a flag tail. And we've got a true black blue arowana here. We've got a, a 15 inch or so Indo Pacific tarpon. We've got a Brycon Dentex. He's in the Dorado family. There's a couple Datnoids in here, as well as some Irwini catfish. We got the Veil Tail Oscar there, but that's pretty much what we have in the thousand gallon aquarium. It's 10 by four by 40 inches tall. If you walk over there, we have a discus tank which we're actually pulling water out of it right now to fill one of our other tanks. But there's all different types of di discus in there. You've got uh, red blood pigeons, you've got snake skins, you've got uh, sunshines. There's a bunch in there I honestly don't know but th those were just donated to us so we made this a fully planted discus tank. And the tank to your right you have nothing but angelfish and a couple Plecos. You've got uh, royal plecos and albino gibbiceps. Now if you continue to do your right, you can see the stingray breeding pond. This is a uh, 2,500 gallon pond. You've got a little bit of mix of everything. You've got black diamonds, henley eyes. There's a uh, de the designer super spot. Uh, Bosmani hybrid in there. You've got a king hen male. So a little bit of everything, but the, these guys are all around uh, two foot discs. All right, making our way this way, you have uh, Tesla the electric eel. Yes, he, he is in a smaller tank for now, but we're trying to max out this tank before we upgrade his tank. And actually see we have this sign hooked up and you can see him actually light, light it up from the current inside the water. Now in the tank to the right we have Lavaca. She is a MBU puffer and she is a character. All she cares about is her food and she's not very nice. Well, my dad says it, it's an MBU but I say MBU. So, you know, potato, potato, you know what I'm talking about. All right, um, let's go ahead and take a walk down here. This is a 2200 get on aquarium filled with nothing but albino, platinum, xanthic fish, basically all color morphs. This is a color morph albino uh, alligator gar that was do donated by Vincent Wu. Now we've got a uh, platinum arrow up top. We've got xanthic tilapia. Of course, we've got the, the platinum albino giant grami, or platinum giant grami, I'm sorry. We've got the albino gibbiceps pleco. We've got albino iridescent sharks. Up in the top corner, we have a short, semi short body xanthic alligator gar that was also donated by Vincent Wu. And then we have the big old platinum red tail, which is also donated by Vince. Very attractive fish and a huge aquarium, and they will soon to have more friends joining them as soon as they grow out. Over here we have the 750 gallon aquarium. This is home to a bunch of uh, African lungfish. We've got the uh, West African. Just the regular African lung. We've got a bunch of hybrid uh, marble tiger shovel nose hybrids. We have Asian red tail cat. And then you, you can see that 
strange fellow swimming around upside down. That is what is known as an upside down catfish. Now we've got, of course, we've got Florida gar in there. We've got uh, Pictus cats. We've got sun catfish. And then a big old Enla cherry biter. Now if you look in the tank behind you, you can see we have a gold dorado growing out along with a red tight digger motag and uh, a lonely flower horn. All right, now the, these are just quarantine tanks, some smaller fish. We've got a little African cichlid we're treating, some guppies and some more of those baby shack koi. Now coming over this way, you have a whole wall of just one giant aquarium wall. It's actually two. Each one, one of these tanks are 1,800 gallons. They are 20 foot long, three foot from front to back, and four foot tall. This first aquarium is nothing but barbs, ballast sharks, silver dollars. Um, we have some machiers in here, African tiger scats. We've got big old pink kissing garamis. We've got uh, Leparanus. We've got Severums. Of course, we've got jelly bean parrots, tinfoil barbs. So this is ba basically just a collection of, of community fish that get big. Now you, you can see some of the, these guys are, are big, some, some are small, and they all play, play nice with each other. If you guys are lucky, you'll see the African arrow come out and uh, say what's up, but he loves to hide. Yeah, he hides behind the coral. All right, so th this is tank one. Both of these tanks came out of the uh, Bellagio Casino in Vegas. This was tank three and four that were on the, the show tanked. Now down here, this is pretty much an exact twin, but these are all African cichlids. I'm not go going to bore you with naming off each and every one, but there are a lo lot of them. Oratus, we've got, you know, Le Lemon Jake's in there. We've got Venustus. There's a Dragon Blood Peacock. There's a whole collection of Mbunas. And you can see when they, they feed, they all kind of crowd together and they think they're getting fed. Su super neat fish and the colors pop with all the corals in, in the tank. You guys can see all the, the babies all over the bottom. So they, they, they do breed like crazy in here. Now if we continue on down the, the row, you guys can see we have an Abba Abba knife over there. Super neat fish, but uh, he is a species only tank, as if we put anything else in there, he will uh, make a snack out of it. <laughs> He do, doesn't really do much. He kind of just sits there. Now, if you look down but below, you can see we have a breeding pair of uh, uh, feste. Where is the female? There she is. So you can see the female right there. You can see they're making their nest all over the bottom of the tank, and that is the male. Now, if you look to your left, this is a quarantine tank. This is a 550 gallon. We had just moved the arowana out of here, so we haven't had new fish come in. And then right down here, we have a whole rack of uh, quarantine tanks. We've got a 125, 240s below, 75 stacks. We've got a 90 with a 75, and then a 400 gallon that is uh, up and coming, actually a 450 gallon but it is up and coming. We've got a 2,000 outside that we haven't even set up yet for the, the summer, but these are the tanks that fish cook them in, we quarantine them, and then they go out to their new homes. Now, if you guys want, I'll go ahead and I'll show you the pond out front, and then we can bring this puppy to a close.
All right, up here we have the uh, Aquascape Ecosystem Pond. This is the one that is actually mature. You guys can see the plants are all done up on the outside. There's uh, bunches and bunches of water lilies. You can see all the flowers popping up at everywhere. It's actually a little later in the day, so they're starting to close back up. But we have uh, pickerel rush, arrowheads, a bunch of different grasses. There's uh, koi and shabunkin. There's even dojo loaches in there. So there, there's just a wide variety of fish. If I can, I'm gonna go ahead and stick this mic by the Walt waterfall so you guys can hear the beautiful sounds of this waterfall. Super neat. And uh, if you guys see here, you, you see these uh, lily pads sticking up and out of the, the water. So if you guys stick a, a lily in shallow water, this is actually what they're going to do. Their, their stems will become a little bit harder and they'll actually reach for the sunlight and you get, get a plant that looks like this. So they can kind of grow in the water like you see here and just have your floating lily pads, but they'll also be sticking up and out. A lot of people mistake these for a water lotus, but the difference between this and a lotus, the, the lotus is actually crinkled around the edge and they, they all kind of come up out of the water. <laughs> I'm not going to put my dad on blast here, but you know, he did make that mistake there. But th this is... Uh, the Aquascape Ecosystem Pond. And at every season, we get better and better with this pond. As you guys can see, more and more plants, everything looks a lot more mature, and it's just gorgeous. Soon, maybe in a year or two, that back pond will look as good as this pond here. But I hope you guys liked today's video. It was a little bit of a quicker tour walkthrough. You guys haven't got one in a while, so I figured you guys would enjoy it. Let me know how you guys like the, 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 the new mics, if the audio is better, if we should keep using them, or if we should try and find something better. But you know what? I ha have my, my hopes, so I hope you guys enjoy. And as always, stay fishy, my friends.